goal of early language literacy and numeracy is for every K-3 to learner to be a good reader and enumerate learners as well. Today, let us learn the relationship of beginning readers, reading development, and the domains of literacy in the K-12 curriculum. This will help strengthen teachers' capability to teach literacy skills effectively. We give credits to the owner of the Literacy Highway presentation by Dr. Felicitas E. Pado of the University of the Philippines. Our session objectives. At the end of the session, the participants should be able to understand the principles of early language literacy and the effective teaching strategies in kinder to grade 3. Recognize the characteristics of the domains of literacy in the K-12 languages and identify the effective teaching strategies in kinder to grade 3. Let us review first the 14 domains of literacy in the K-12 languages curriculum. These are oral language, phonological awareness, book and print orientation, alphabet knowledge, word recognition, fluency, spelling, handwriting, composing, grammar awareness, vocabulary, reading comprehension, which includes activating schema or prior knowledge, comprehension strategies, comprehension of literary texts, and comprehension of informational text, attitude toward language, literature, and literacy, and study skills. In kinder to grade three, or the key stage one, all the domains should be developed from kinder to grade three level in the mother tongue first, then in Filipino, then in English language. Notice that some domains already stopped after grade three, meaning that the children have developed these domains already at the end of grade three. Phonological awareness, book and print orientation, alphabet knowledge, handwriting, phonics and word recognition are given focus until the end of grade three. Spelling and fluency are given focus until the end of grade six, while listening comprehension is given focus until grade 10. On the other hand, oral language, composing, grammar awareness, vocabulary development, reading comprehension, attitude towards literacy, language, and literature, and study skills are given focus until grade 12 since learners are learning continuously through these domains. Let us start with the stages of reading development. And the first stage of reading development among beginning learners is stage zero. This happens during birth to preschool, which is named as the emergent literacy, where the learner gains control of oral language. They rely on pictures and text. That's why we use picture books to them. They also pretend to read, where we could see our children pretend to be an adult when holding a book, and that, eventually, they read like an adult too and they really believe that they can read. Also, the child recognizes rhymes at this stage. For example, when they hear their mother sings, they could also sing along with them, but only the rhyming words are heard when these children sing. Lastly, they also start recognizing letters, and the normal age for all children to be capable of recognizing letters is at age 4. The next stage is called Beginning Grade 1, and its name is Decoding Stage, where a learner grows aware of sound-symbol relationship. Here, the children also focus on printed symbols. Our children also use decoding to figure out words and are developing their listening to reading comprehension. Lastly, the stage 2 or the end of grade 1 to end of grade 3 is called confirmation and fluency stage. 
Here, the learners develop fluency in reading. They also learn to recognize patterns and words and where they check for meaning and sense. At this stage also, the child should know a stock of sight words. After knowing the learner's characteristics at every stage of reading development, let us see what the means of literacy during these stages are expected for each learner to achieve because the learner's characteristics based on their age and individuality is interrelated with expected literacy domains. Let us start with emergent literacy stage. Earlier, we discussed that at this stage, the learner gains control of overall language, relies on pictures and text, pretends to read, recognizes rhymes, and starts recognizing letters. These characteristics are directly related to the following literacy domains and which they are expected to achieve. They are expected to have the attitude towards literacy, language, and literature that is their love for reading. We also want to develop their oral language development, phonological awareness, book and print orientation, alphabet knowledge, and handwriting. Let us talk about the main one, or attitude towards literacy, language, and literature. The child has to have a sense of being a reader and developing individual choices of and tastes for texts to read for various purposes. They read in order to learn and they read for pleasure. On developing the attitude towards literacy according to Dorothy Strickland, Children who have positive attitudes and experiences about reading are more likely to be motivated to learn to read. Here, story reading is a very essential strategy for teachers to develop positive attitude towards literacy. In developing positive attitude towards literacy through story reading, Brain development research shows that reading aloud to children every day would definitely increase the child's brain's capacity for language and literacy skills. It is the most important thing that one can do to prepare them for learning to read. By this, listening to stories read by the parent or the teacher and having a print-rich environment we can develop positive attitude towards language, literacy, and literature. At the emergent literacy stage, we expect the child to develop also the domain two, which is oral language in the language of literacy. Oral language refers to one's knowledge and use of the structure, meanings, and uses of the language. Literacy development depends on the development of oral language in the language of literacy. One cannot be successful in learning to read and write in the language that he does not understand. But how do we develop oral language? Oral language is developed through listening to stories read by the teacher, when the learners are listening to and reciting poems, they also develop their oral language. Storytelling, story enactment, news sharing, language games such as I Spy and Show and Tell, lots of talking opportunities are some of the activities that help our children unfold their oral language. Aside from the activities, we have to provide a direct instruction to develop oral language as well as vocabulary. First, we can do the learning the letters, for example. The names of these pictures start in M. Let's name them. Here, the teacher shows pictures that start with the letter they are learning. Next, we do the unlocking new or difficult words prior to story reading. For example, sa ating kwento ay may isang matadero. Ito ang larawan ng matadero. We use pictures to unlock new or difficult words. And lastly, you can introduce concepts in other subjects or what we call 
integration. Let us remember that oral language development starts with the child learning his or her first language, followed by the second language before learning the third language. Home language is the life language. They understand life and embrace life based on the ideas they learned using this language. L2 or other languages are second dominant language of the child, and L3 is the next language heard and spoken in addition to language 1 and 2. Let us proceed with the main three, or phonological awareness. This is another domain a child is expected to have at the emergent literacy stage. Phonological awareness is different from phonemic awareness. Phonological awareness involves work with rhymes, syllables, onsets, and rhymes. While phonemic awareness is the ability to notice, think about, and work with the individual sounds in spoken words. To see the difference, let us see the activities that we do when we want to develop phonological awareness. First, we do the detecting rhymes and riddles in poems and in songs. For example, anong mga salita ang magkatunog? Hindi hari, hindi pari. Damit ay sari-sari. Hari, pari, at sari-sari are the words that rhyme in this example. Next, we have syllable detection. Ipalakpak ang mga pantig sa iyong pangalan. Halimbawa, Margarita. Mar Ipalakpak ang mga pantig sa sasabihin kong salita. Mata. Butike. Phonological awareness is a broad term that includes phonemic awareness, and again, it is the ability to notice, think about, and work with the individual sounds, or what we call as phonemes in spoken words. So before children learn to read print, they need to become aware of how the sounds in words work. Here are some examples of activities where we develop phonemic awareness. First, we have detecting the onset. Ano ang umpisang tunog ng salitang mais? That is m, sawa, s, laso, l. Detecting the rhyme. Ano ang huling tunog sa salitang gatas? That is s, patatas, s. The next domain is domain four or book and print knowledge. This refers to knowing and being acquainted with books and how print works. Book and print orientation includes skills in identifying the parts of a book, the front and the back cover, and its pages. They also have to know that a book has an author, an illustrator, and telling them what they do. They have to learn to hold the book right side up and flip the pages of the book sequentially, one page at a time. Children have to know where a story begins too. They have to learn to track the storyline from left to right and from top to bottom while the story is being read to them. They need to learn to make correct return sweep and the need to consistently look at the left page first before looking at the right page. It is a must for them to realize that the message of most books is in the print and not in the pictures. Lastly, they have to make one-to-one -one correspondence between written and spoken words. This is an example of modeling book handling behaviors. When teachers do this in class, they develop the child's love for reading. The next domain is the main five or alphabet knowledge. Here, a child must have the ability to recognize name 
and sound out all the upper and lower case letter of the alphabet. A child must learn that each letter of the alphabet has a name, has an upper and lower case, and is written in a certain way. A letter also has a distinct sound. Learning the alphabet and having a knowledge about it paves the way for phonics and word recognition. Children learn letter names by singing songs such as the alphabet song and by reciting rhymes. They learn letter shapes as they play with blocks, plastic letters, and alphabetic books. Informal but planned instruction in which children have many opportunities to see, play with, and compare letters leads to efficient letter learning. This instruction should include activities in which children learn to identify name and write both uppercase and lowercase versions of each letter. Domain 6 is handwriting, the ability to form letters through manuscript and cursive styles. Handwriting in the earliest grades is linked to basic reading and spelling achievement. For example, when children learn how to form the letter M, they can also be learning its sound. Attention to the linkages among handwriting, reading, and spelling skills can help to reinforce early achievement across these areas. Some observations on writing or handwriting, the ability to write literally is dependent on the development of child's fine motor skills. Learners who have developed their fine motor skills at home are more likely to write legibly than those who were not able to develop at an early stage. Those were the domains included in the emergent literacy. Now, here are the activities in a preschool or grade 1 class. We can do the sharing activities which includes recitation of nursery rhymes or poems, singing songs, show and tell or news reporting, and on the other hand, we can do sharing stories to children, which can be in a form of shared reading, read aloud, or storytelling. We can include activities like story discussion and direct instruction on letters of the alphabet and word recognition. Let us now proceed in the decoding stage or grade one. The characteristics of learners are they grow aware of sound symbol relationship. For example, this is letter L and the sound is L. This is how I write the uppercase L and this is how I write the lowercase L. They focus on printed symbols. Once children can read, they are excited to read everything in the environment. Another is that they use decoding to figure out words, and they are developing listening to reading comprehension or where they start learning to read. And at decoding stage, learners are expected to be good at phonics and word recognition, which includes vocabulary development, spelling, grammar awareness, composing, Comprehension, which includes listening comprehension and reading comprehension. Let us start with the main seven, or phonics and word recognition. This is the ability to identify a written word by sight or by deciphering the relationship between the sounds of spoken language and the letters in written language. It is prerequisite for this domain that the child knows the sound of the letters. Reading in the learner's home language starts with his or her experiences. In the beginning literacy, be sure that what children read is based on their experiences so they will have prior knowledge of what they are reading. If the oral language of the child and the printed symbols are the same, then reading with understanding can occur. When we introduce words, vocabulary development should be its partner. Every word that a child reads must be understood. 
whatever he decodes in the text is put into imagination. For example, reading the sentence, May itlog sa pugad. The child imagines what is written, therefore, he understands what he is reading. The next domain is the main eight or spelling. This is being able to convert oral language sounds into printed language symbols. In kindergarten and beginning grade one, we accept invented spelling. But once we have introduced the word, we expect them to spell it correctly. Here are the examples of invented spelling. The words in the first column are invented spelling, while on the second column are the correct spelling of the words. The use of invented spelling has some important advantages for beginning spellers. It allows young children to express their thoughts in writing without becoming excessively focused on spelling every single word correctly. Next is the main nine, which is grammar awareness. It is the knowledge of language features and sentence structures in written language. But how do we teach grammar lesson in beginning readers? During the early years, grammar is taught indirectly through oral activities and exposure to correct grammatical structures where a teacher should be a good role model. Explicit teaching of grammar structures happen. Lots of oral activities to encourage the use of grammatical structure in games, Contest and storytelling can be used to teach grammar lesson in the early language. We use explicit instruction to teach a grammar lesson too. The first step is introduction, which uses the story events and characters for introducing the structure. The story read during the story reading session serves as the springboard in teaching a grammar lesson. The second step is teaching and modeling, where he or she shows examples that will generate generalization about the grammatical structure. Then we have guided practice or practices, which are oral activities in the form of games and contests. After the guided practices, we have independent practice, which can be in a form of a seat work and application when they use what they learned in new instances. The next domain is the main 10, which is composing. In this domain, the child is able to formulate ideas to sentences or longer texts and represent them in the conventional orthographic patterns of written language. Here, we ask the children to write down or draw out their ideas in different ways. A composing activity is maybe an offshoot of a story listened to. Here are some examples of composing skills outputs of our learners. The question is, should we put a red mark on the incorrect spelling of the learners? Definitely no. But we can tell them, this is correct for now, but I will show you the correct spelling. In this way, we could let our learners experience success, but eventually checking out on their work. Here are other examples. Teachers should think something creative for developing composing skills among learners. Activities like short paragraphs, letters, posters, diaries, and stories can be used as an activity in developing composing skills. Writing sentences which may use invented spelling, if the words that he or she writes has not been taught yet, can be an activity for developing composing skills too. The last stage is fluency stage. This happens at the end of grade 1 to grade 3, where a child develops fluency in reading recognizes patterns and words, checks for meaning and sense, and knows the stock of sight words. At this point, we already stress fluency among our learners, vocabulary development, reading comprehension, and study skills 
as the means expected for them to achieve at this stage. The first domain at this stage is domain 11 or fluency, the ability to read orally with speed, accuracy, and proper expression. Fluency includes accuracy or words are read correctly. When a student reads accurately, this usually indicates that she or he can decode words with minimal effort. Automaticity. When they see a word, they can read it automatically or is the quick, accurate recognition of words and proper expression. This is how learners read using the proper tone, pauses, and intonation. Short pauses between words and longer pauses between sentences are evident. A child is good at his word recognition if he reads word accurately, rapidly, and which it requires little conscious attention to decoding the words so that attention can be directed to the comprehension process. This is because one reason students may not comprehend text is that they are spending all their attention and energy on figuring out the words rather than the text as a whole. Next is the main 12 or vocabulary development. This is also included in the fluency stage. This is the knowledge of words and their meanings in both oral and print representations. In this domain, what the child can decode, he or she should understand. How do we teach vocabulary in the early grades? Vocabulary learning happens during sharing activities in the early grades. Some of the sample activity is the I spy or show and tell. Also, we teach in story reading specifically when we unlock difficult words and listen to the words in context during the story reading. Also, we teach vocabulary development in the early grades if we, for example, have these activities. Learning the letters of the alphabet words that begins with a specific letter and using pictures of the words you are introducing. Word recognition lesson can develop vocabulary too, as well as activities in other disciplines and explicit teaching of vocabulary words. We also have Domain 13, or Comprehension, which talks about the complex and active process in which vocabulary knowledge is a crucial component and which requires intentional and thoughtful interaction between the reader and the text. The Domain for Comprehension includes Listening and Reading Comprehension. Listening comprehension happens prior to learning to read. This is a complex and active process in which vocabulary knowledge is crucial component and which requires an intentional, thoughtful interaction between the listener and the text. While well, reading comprehension happens when children read the text with understanding. The role of vocabulary and fluency in comprehension is that when a child has good fluency and a lot of vocabulary words at his end, he is able to comprehend what he is reading. He will not have to spend time understanding the meaning of each word in the sentence, but rather spend time comprehending the whole story. Also, there should be an interaction between the reader and the text. If the child is reading a material within his or her context that is related to his or her schema, the language used in the story is the language he speaks or has learned, it arouses his interest and he reads with purpose, there is a big chance for a reader and the text to have an interaction. Along with comprehension, are the comprehension skills. First, 
is the use of context and prior knowledge. This is activating prior knowledge conceptually related to text and establishing a purpose for reading. Readers who bring relevant prior knowledge to a text are expected to generate more meaning than readers who do not possess this prior knowledge. Next is the comprehension strategies or being self-aware as they discuss or analyze text to create new meaning and modify old knowledge. For a child to be able to accurately understand written material, children need to be able to make connections between what they read and what they already know. Learners must have to think deeply about what they have read too. We also have comprehending literary text, which responding to literary text through the appreciation of literary devices and an understanding of story grammar. Story grammar research provides evidence that children use their knowledge of story structure to understand and recall stories, to make predictions about stories, and to generate their own stories also. And we also have comprehending informational text, which is locating information from expository text and use this information for discussion or written production. This skill will get them ready for higher grades and eventually exposing learners to expository text will help them improve science and social studies performance. Along with this discussion is the difference between decoding and comprehending. Reading is getting meaning from and giving meaning to the printed symbols. If you are able to decode the words but you do not get the meaning from them, do you read? The answer is no. You are not reading. If you are not able to understand what you are decoding, then you are not reading because again, Reading is getting meaning from and giving meaning to the printed symbols. The last domain is the main 14 or study skills. This is a general term for techniques and strategies that help a person read or listen for specific purposes with the intent to remember. Here are examples of study skills. Learners learn to follow oral or written directions. They use the information in the table of contents and glossary. Learners read a chart, pictograph, a line graph, or a bar graph and get or interpret information from a table. To summarize the domains and activities we do to teach literacy in kinder, we do the sharing period for the following domains. Oral language development, phonological awareness, and vocabulary development. For story reading by the teacher, it is used in book and print orientation, oral language, vocabulary development, listening comprehension, and attitude towards language, literature, and literacy. On direct instruction on the alphabet, this is used in alphabet knowledge when we teach letter name, sound, uppercase and lowercase letters, handwriting, and vocabulary. In teaching literacy in grade 1 to grade 3, sharing period is done when you teach the domains in oral language development, phonological awareness, and vocabulary development, while story reading by the teacher is done in teaching book and print orientation, oral language development, vocabulary development, listening comprehension, composing, and attitude towards language, literature, and literacy. While direct instruction is used to teach word recognition, handwriting, vocabulary, spelling, fluency, reading comprehension, grammar awareness, and study skills. The life of literacy is created by the sparks between a child, a book, and the person reading. It is the road to human progress and the means through which every man, 
woman, and child can realize his or her potential. This is Dara A. Cabana, your reading advocate. Anytime, anywhere, in any ways. Thank you so much for listening.